Hello everyone, and oh my, oh my, oh my, it's another DLC for Unity of Command 2, the fifth in fact, and as previously predicted, it's a journey to North and not so North Africa with desert rats. As you lead mostly Commonwealth, but sometimes other troops against the Axis in a kind of lead up from summer 1940 to the base campaign of the game. In addition to all of the usual battle axes, crusaders and al alamains we usually see in this theater, this expansion's 21 missions will take us on slightly less trodden paths with Greece, Syria and East Africa and it's a real pleasure to see these lesser known parts of World War II actually shown in the game and to actually get a chance to play these events out and Unity of Command 2 is great at retaining the flavor of each of these places, especially East Africa. I absolutely love the large areas and the simulation of the mad dash of the Nigerian motorized brigade. But you will see all of that in my mission coverage. As I'm making this video, I've completed about half of the DLC and stuck, actually stuck around Crusader. So the series might end up cut short. Wah, wah. But so far I've been enjoying the DLC no surprises there, I love Unity of Command 2, and I absolutely love that the developers are looking for new ways to explore the system with ever new challenges in terms of how you juggle your supply, the way you approach ports, say Italians can't use certain ports while the British can because of the naval superiority, and it's very nice to see the diversity of the Commonwealth units here, including the Nigerian and South African and all the other troops. Now let's proceed to the more gamey and administrative thoughts. If you don't know, the mission guides that I present in these videos are made for hard difficulty, and so far I'm happy to say Desert Rats is a smoother, hard experience than Stalingrad was. I also never buy cards during conferences. The reason for this is that they're randomized and whatever I get is not exactly what you're going to get, and I simply cannot rely on that kind of logic in my guides. Plus, the missions in this DLC actually shower you with cards, especially those of trucks. So much so that I've started to keep a tally of all of the cards you get in these missions, because a card limit means that you'll have to spend some of them. Once again, just to keep these things predictable. You are also very much expected to spend these truck cards, because the supply situation generally is going to be pretty difficult in these missions, especially in East Africa. And as an additional piece of general advice, Please pay attention to the briefings of the missions and the descriptions of the HQs. These include valuable advice about what potentially you should be doing, about what kinds of skills you should be buying for your HQs, and these suggestions are pretty much universally, unambiguously good. And so, without much further ado, let's look at the first two conferences of the Desert Rats DLC. Desert Rats meets us with a mission in Greece with Epirus Offensive, and if there is one word to describe it, it is supply. It's horrendous, and there are two things you need to keep in mind to make your life tolerable here. One, don't miss the town of Sarande. It is a source of supply, and while the Italians are not using it, you will. And in addition to being an actual objective, it's a great place to set up a supply hub somewhere close to the center of the map. Point number two, the truck card. You get a corche, use it. As I've mentioned, Truck cards are very common in this DLC, so you're not gonna get stuck with that one and needing one. And having an additional truck on this map makes it much, much easier to set up an additional supply hub without any pain. In terms of the battle itself, North should be fairly straightforward. Use feint attacks and kick out the defenders of Korce and push towards Pogradets. You should have enough troops and time to take that town. Once it's yours, leave someone to guard it, and go south to help out with a breakthrough at Klisura and Berat. In the south, repair all those bridges, kill the division you're supposed to kill is pretty easy, send someone to Klisura and push the bulk of your forces to the west to surround Sarande. Usually you can wait a little bit to starve the enemy of supply there, and the cavalry division you will get later in the mission will actually help you with that. Use largely the same tactic at Himare, 
there. The AI is likely to leave its pretty good tank division in the objective. And so surrounding, starving, and killing is a good idea here as well. After the fall of Sarande, your supply situation will have a lot of potential to get much better, making it possible to break through at Glissura and advance towards Berat. At this point, the enemy should not have too many troops remaining. And at this point, your main objective will be to block Vlore. You're very unlikely to take it right off the bat. And the Italians will get some reinforcements in that area, in the hexes north of Lore, so make sure they can't leave, they can't cross the river, and then just surround the town with units that are capable of set-piece attacks and take out its defenders. After resigning a little bit of fiddliness in Epirus, you would expect Compass 1 to be even worse, but no, this is the first really easy mission in the DLC. And the good news is that pretty much all of the Italian troops on this map are static, with just one little thing to keep in mind. Now, your obvious first turn one maneuver here is to bypass City Barani and rush towards Book Book. And absolutely do encircle City Barani. The Italians are not using that port for supply. Book Book itself is not a priority. As you can see, you can take it later in the mission. What's more important on turn one is to damage the Italian tank unit and maybe the Book Book defenders because the AI will retaliate to your encircling City Barani if it has the mobile reserves to do so. And that's pretty much the only active resistance you're gonna encounter in this mission. Use your infantry to crush the siege at City Barani. Don't worry too much about keeping your front line tight. Once again, the Italians are pretty passive here. And rush your tank and motorized brigades along the coast as quickly as possible towards Solemn and Isolate Bardia. Once you take the Isolate Bardia objective, you're going to cut off the supply of these two objectives. Just make sure to look at the map using the terrain mode because there are a few ridges around Bardia which can prevent attacks from certain neighboring hexes. Actually, that's the reason why I had to restart the mission once my success at Bardia hung on one attack which I couldn't do because of the ridges and I had to restart. And I don't really think there are any other pitfalls here. So that compass thing must have been great because they've decided to do another one. And this here, Compass 2, is one of them one-trick missions. So what's the trick, Exabo, you ask? And I say, well, look at that little book next to the name Benghazi on the map. At least I assume it's a book. Anyway, if you take Benghazi all of the Italians, including all of the reinforcements they might get by the end of the mission, will take their Mussolini guaranteed spaghetti lunch break and will turn into stragglers. So a key element in cracking this mission is taking your motorized division, preferably equipped with a recon detachment, and just beelining westwards through all of the desert. It is possible to take Benghazi on turn 7 and make sure you don't waste your naval bombardment for anything else, keep it for Benghazi, all right? All of this means that you will only really have to fight for Tobruk. So push your tanks forward around Tobruk and towards Michili and Derna, obviously preparing the ground for taking them empty and cutting off the supply to Tobruk. Remember that that port is not used by the Italians. And while all of your motorized units do all their shenanigans, use your infantry and artillery to do good old siege warfare. You have a fair amount of time to succeed in that, it's a good idea to get both an engineer and an artillery step in one of your infantry brigades for that extra punch against Tobruk itself because it's going to be relatively well defended, but there's nothing a few well-placed set-piece attacks, faint attacks and airstrikes can't soul. So 
there are two sticking points that will make you mad in Roads to Karen. The first one is, well, Karen itself, i.e. the Raid Karen objective, and the defenders there are an incredibly difficult nut to crack, especially if you're playing on hard, and I had to equip one of my Indian divisions with an engineer and a Gurkha specialist just to make a dent in that objective. Another problem that I encountered, and I suspect this is gonna be one of those things that get patched very quickly, is about the Kub Kub objective. So the deal in the east of the map is pretty straightforward. You move all of your units along the coast, you defeat the enemy at Karora, set up a supply hub there, and push forward to Kub Kub. The problem is that Kub Kub, which is not particularly well defended, you can actually kill that cavalry unit. It is a mountainous hex, and if an enemy HQ is sitting in it, you can't enter that hex and the AI knows it. So after getting burned a few times and not getting a completionist outcome in this mission, I actually tried to look for a way to screw with the AI's head so to speak. So the approach that stuck is great in other ways actually, and it's pushing your motorized division in a pincer maneuver north of Bissia and Akadat. Essentially your goal here is to cross the enemy railway line behind Akadat on turn 3. This seems to do the AI voodoo magic stuff right, and the enemy HQ just sits next to the edge of the map. With the added advantage of all of the objectives west of that motorized division, losing the their supply and being far easier to clear. Once they are that, i.e. clear, bunch up as many of your troops next to Raid Karen, make sure your Indian division with the Gurkhas and Engineers still has them, and push them into the first attack to destroy some of those fortifications and weaken the defenders, and kick out those defenders and get that HQ level up that probably is not worth all those horrible losses. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, isn't Africa huge? And this is the first mission where you can feel it. And as is usual with all these huge maps, early decisions about where you send your troops are critical in succeeding, and Canvas is no exception. So let's look at the West Chunkers, which is slightly easier than everything else. Note that you have a truck supply source in the far west, meaning that you will be able to set up your own supply hub around Ledois, and so send those two divisions to clear the area west of the lake. The Italians have a few weak green units there, and will not hesitate to counterattack once you start approaching Kalam. So take your time removing all this resistance and ultimately taking Kalam, you've got plenty of time to do that, and these divisions will not be useful for anything else. Push the other two divisions in the area northwards towards the frontier wells, and then pivot east along the road where you will set up a supply hub and attack Vega from the northwest because the defenders in the mountain are pretty tough and static at the same time. They are really not worth your attention, and once Mega is yours, push one of your divisions towards Moyale with some air supports. The town is not going to be too difficult to take. Now, the eastern portion of the map will require us to invent a couple of tricks. The obvious first objective is, of course, Afmado. It's not going to be too much of a problem, and then once you are done with it, move towards Kismayo, not only because it's an objective, but also a port and you will already be starved for supplies in this area and so clear the ports and cross the bridge there. The hex southwest of Margarita is perfect for pizza i.e. supply hub and once you clear the enemy zones of control there rush your Nigerian motorized division towards Mogadishu. It's completely undefended and you will take a port with that city so you will be able to supply the Nigerians. And that was the first trick. The second trick once you take off Mardu, allocate one of your units to actually cross the river north upstream of Gilib. Your HQ should have that capability and the function of that unit will be to encircle Galib from the north. The town is well defended by the standards of this place and you're very unlikely to be able to kick the defenders out without ridding them of their supply. And 
this is it for today. In the next video in this cracking sub-series, you can expect lots and lots of disasters, lots and lots of retreats for an interesting change to what you usually see in Unity of Command 2. Until then, I hope you enjoy the game with or without my guidance. Cheers.